It's a short time wrestling podcast. Wonder Twin Powers activate today, talking with Justin and Josh Portillo, the twins from Grandview and Nebraska Kearney, out of the great wrestling town of Clarion, Iowa. They made some national news. Actually, you guys even made the Big Ten Network, even though you don't wrestle in the Big Ten, for your matchup this past weekend in the duel between your respective schools with a win streak on the line, a lot of family bragging rights and such. So uh, first off, I'm going to start with, with let's see, P1, we go. P1, check him cheat here. P1, Justin, we'll go with you. First of all, uh, what's it like to, to come off that experience and, and kind of be talked about by a lot of people in the wrestling community? Yeah, I mean, I didn't think the match would be – as big as it ended up being, but I mean, us two facing alone wouldn't pretty cool. But the fact that we're both on really talented teams, the streak was on the line. It, it all just came together, and uh, I just I'm glad to have been able to make something like that happen. It was a tough foe, and like I want those challenges. I want someone tough, and of course he he gave me a loss, and those are where I grow from the most. So, yeah. Josh, your thoughts. You came away with your hand raised in that situation, but uh, I guess I want to get your perspective on whose idea was this initially? It was honestly both of our ideas. I mean, we're both kind of like what he said, part of very, very good wrestling teams. And, you know, we, we could kind of take it personal, uh, which one of our teams is better. So we've always wanted our teams to face. We've... Uh, <coughs> We fantasized of a, an amazing duel me and it lived down to it. So, uh, I mean, we got what we wanted, but it, it was kind of a duo effort. We, so we both kind of pushed our coaches a little bit like, hey, make this happen. Like, it's going to be a, an amazing duel. You won't regret it, you know, stuff like that. And so, yeah, we, we worked together and the the two coaches finally decided to agree to do it during our final year of college wrestling. So. It's awesome. Yeah, like I, I'd always like nag my coach about it. Like, let's get this duel signed up, and uh, I'd like tease Josh. And say, coach is scared. He doesn't want it. He doesn't <laughs> want to do it. But yeah, it kind of just came up out of nowhere. Just saw the schedule posted, and I had to like double check. Like, wait, this really happening? And sure enough, yeah, we we got it going. So I t- I talked to. to- Paul Reedy and Nick Mitchell at Grandview earlier in the year, and at looking at the streak, which of which I've been tracking, you know, since the last loss back in 2013, uh, before either of you were even in college, even though it seems like you guys have been there forever because you have been. But in looking at the streak, it's like okay, you know, there's there's the criticisms of oh, when are you guys going to wrestle by? Well, here's a chance to wrestle, you know, Nebraska Carney, which started the year I think ranked number number two, what number one, number two in the country, depending on how you look at the tournament points and whatnot. And then there it is. Nick goes, okay, we're a week after the national duels. We'll be coming off a duel before. Ultimately, it was the perfect storm. If this probably wasn't the best idea, but it happened. So, uh, Justin, from your team's perspective, with 111 wins in a row going in to the drive out to Kearney, what's the mood on the bus? And then what's what's the mood like with you knowing, okay, I'm a couple hours away from, from scrapping somebody that I've been scrapping with since I've been in the womb. Yeah, uh, Coach Mitchell kind of talked to us before the duel and kind of talked about why we're doing this. And it, it's like the streak is – it's cool and everything, but, like, most of the time throughout the years, that's just us doing conference teams, other NAI schools. Cool, right? But we want to do something that's challenging. We want to take a bite bigger than we can chew, you know? And it, Mitchell even talked to us, like, yeah, the week after the national duels, a lot of our guys are beat up. We want to do things the hard way. And we, we stepped in there knowing it was going to be a hostile environment, knowing that each and every one of those dudes in their lineup is super talented. And it, it's just we, we want to get after that. You know, we want to get these big challenges out of the way. And uh, that's, that's how I want my legacy to be defined. That's how I want my team's legacy to be defined. We go after the tough stuff, and, yeah, I, I really enjoy the dual meet. But, yeah, really, I, I try my best to just treat it like any other match. Uh, Mitchell even, he kind of, like, came up to me and was like, I got some notes on this guy for you. And uh, we just kind of laughed about it because I've been watching film on this dude my entire life. But, yeah, I was really trying to go into it, treating it just like any other match. Um, like, like I said, Josh Portillo is no scrub and it, I had to go in there completely ready for whatever he was going to throw at me. So, uh, 
Yeah, it's a dual meet that I think a lot of our guys were looking forward to just because it's kind of stepping out of our comfort zone. And I'm really glad we we're able to make it happen. Josh, what about from your team's perspective before you even step on the mat with your brother? You guys were coming off a knockdown, drag out national duels. I mean, that duel was St. Cloud State. I actually called that one for, for Fox College Sports. Probably one of the better duels anybody's going to see in college wrestling. Back and forth, close matches. I mean, you you had a gritty one. And it, it just that was what was kind of coming out of Louisville is how awesome this tournament was. And then you got to follow it up. Justin, you, you guys have uh, you know a budding rivalry with life. They knocked you guys off the tournament this year. You got them again at the National Duels for the third straight year. So you, your teams are both coming off intense pressure situations. And then you guys are in another knockdown drag out. This, this Carney Grandview duel, when 1918, again, we had craziness happen to unfold just to put it in you guys' hands to determine the duel. So, uh, Josh, I mean, talk about it from your perspective. is like coming off the week that Carney had heading, heading into Grandview coming into your place. Yeah, you know, I love being a part of this wrestling team because we have such crazy battles all the time. Uh, we're either going to win the duel really bad or the ones that we lose, we're at least going to go down swinging. So I was going to say, yes, uh, I, I knew you were commentating at the uh, national duels when we faced St. Cloud. That was one of the craziest duels I've ever been a part of. And then we go and turn it around one week later and have an absolute barn burner with Grandview. Like, I mean, you couldn't imagine it. Like, there's crazy matches up and down the the, the lineup. It was it was like it was scripted, and uh, yeah, there's uh, the the thing is, I think if we wrestle Grandview again, it's a complete different duel all over again. Like, there's so many different things that that could have changed um, just in that match alone, and it was just it was just a pleasure to be a part of because. Not only was it two really good teams wrestling, but there wasn't boring matches. There was action every which way you looked, and it's just a pleasure to be down to be a part of uh, history. I'd say I'd say this was a historical duel, and just it, it's hard to get that many good wrestlers together, especially uh, non D one, and just have them scrap and have nothing on the line in a way because we're in different divisions, but at the same time, a lot on the line. And it was just a pleasure to be a part of that duel. When we go back to you guys growing up of, you know, when, when twins wrestle, I mean, it's kind of your built in workout partner. You guys have been scrapping, you know, we joke since in the womb, but uh, in growing up in Clarion, Iowa, what's the wrestling world like growing up in Iowa wrestling? It's a culture within the state, but what's it like in Clarion? And what did you guys uh, love about the sport growing up there? Well, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead with Justin and, first, yeah. Yeah, I'm P1, so I'll go for this. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, um, well, and actually, we grew up in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, so we grew up in Toledo. is a pretty big city in northwest Ohio. And we didn't move to Iowa until after our freshman years of high school. Okay, so I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, but the culture of Iowa wrestling still heavily influenced us. And it was almost, it hit us even harder since we weren't like raised into it. So like when we first moved to Iowa, we were just kind of blown away by the amount of attention the sport got here, the support, the fans. We even have Matt side cheerleaders in high school. That's not in every state. Uh, so I, I, we were welcomed in open arms when we uh, moved over to Clarion. And those were some really good years. And I just, I look back to those and the whole community of Clarion really made me want to like do good for them, you know, like, more so than just myself. Like I'm repping that little town and, you know, it's a tiny little town. It's kind of your stereotypical small town, Iowa wrestling. The reason a lot of us were good on that team was because of our work ethic and uh, me and my brother tried to be a good example of that when we were in high school. And, uh, yeah, I think that, that set us up pretty well for college. Uh, I think we were noticed a lot more out here in Iowa than we may have been in Ohio. But, yeah, I love Iowa high school wrestling. I, that's why I stayed in the state. I came back to Grandview because I was the place to be. 
Josh, your perspective on that and, you know, coming into to a new place and sometimes you, you don't know what you're getting with your coaches. So say you're growing up in Ohio, you've got the coaches that, that kind of helped you and train. You kind of know the community. You know what you're getting into when you get into high school. When you come into high school in Iowa, uh, what were some things about the coaching staff and, and co- wrestling at uh, Clarion Goldfield Dallas, one of those nice three name schools that the Midwest loves to have, but uh, talk about the wrestling coaching and, and, you know, wrestling for the high school program there and how it set you guys up to, to compete at the next level. Yeah. So we had amazing coaches in Ohio too. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's not like we were just terrible wrestlers in Ohio. Uh, so we had amazing coaches then, but I definitely think our coaches in Iowa are the ones that took us to a level uh, above and beyond when we moved here. Uh, people like Carl Valley, who is the main coach at Team Valley, which is our main club at, that's in Clarion, Iowa. Um, Dan Gabrielson and K- Kurt Morgan, those three guys alone uh, pretty much changed our lives. And uh, yeah, they, they kind of just lived and, and breathed wrestling and they helped us reach our goals, which was to be state champions and, and, and more in college. And uh, so, yeah, just when, when you ask us about our coaches in Iowa, uh, I, I think they're, that we just wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for our specific coaches that we had, Kurt Morgan, Carl Valley, and Dan Gabrielson. So I'm very thankful for them. Now when the opportunity comes to, you know, you finish as uh... – Let's see. Uh, as I checked, but make sure P1 and P2 stats are right. Justin, two-time state champ. Josh, three-time state champ. Opportunity. When you're a multiple-time state champ in Iowa, you're going to get some looks, and you're going to get – there's the expectation of big things. So you guys both went to South Dakota State for your first year, and for one reason or another, people tend don't always stick around with the place where they, where they first go to. So uh, for you all situation, why was, the, why was South Dakota State the right fit initially, and why did you guys feel like you needed a change – uh, after that first year, I guess I'll start with you, Josh, this time. Yeah, so at first, it was a great fit. Uh, we talked to the co- coaches that were there at the time, and they made it seem like a phenomenal place. And the bottom line is, it was one of the best choices for both me and Justin as a combined duo, which at the time in high school, we did kind of want to stick together for sure. And <clears throat> Our dad was really pushing it, and yeah, we kind of wanted to stick together, and that was the best uh, duo package, if that makes sense. But uh, yeah, we we were just there, and the the school was awesome there, but sometimes things just aren't like always as they seem immediately, or it might seem one way on a recruiting visit, and it's not that way when you're actually there, and yeah, we just realized that maybe we weren't the best fit for that wrestling team. And, uh, you know, we still had uh, goals and dreams to be Division One for sure. When, when I uh, went into the, the – the, there wasn't the transfer portal at the time, but when, when I transferred, I was looking at six different schools, and five of them were still D1. And the only one that wasn't D1 was Nebraska Kearney, which is where I'm at now. But um, the the fact of the matter is we just weren't a fit, good fit for that program. And we wanted to split up and go to different colleges. And that's kind of why we ended up uh, leaving South Dakota State, I guess, without giving away too much personal stuff. <laughs> right. Right. Now, Justin, you went the NAI route. In, and, and what's atypical for Grandview is a lot of these NAI schools are not in – cities they're in smaller towns they're uh small small midwestern towns i mean you look at the 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 makeup of just the conference schools uh within the conference you guys are in it's a lot of lot you're going to small towns i mean you're not going you're not going in oh look there's there's the state capital of iowa like grandview is in des moines so grandview's unique is it's it's a it's a big city and it is is a small school program at the same time so you get kind of the best of that both worlds because when when you know where, where's all the industry as far as business goes in Iowa obviously we have the uh, the agricultural industry that Iowa is synonymous with but when you're looking for for the business world in the state of Iowa it's Des Moines so there's a lot of draw there uh, for for students to go to Drake to go to Grandview etc but you'd mentioned a name Carl Valley or J- uh, Josh had mentioned him Carl Valley. Carl wrestled in the NAI how much was his small school experience influential on you guys maybe looking outside of Division One, Justin, I'll pitch that one to you. 
Yeah, like I feel like he talked to us a few times before about it. Yeah, he wrestled at Montana State Northern, had a really successful career. Well, he actually wrestled at a few different schools, just like us, transferring all over the place. But, uh, yeah, I guess that didn't, like, directly influence me. But you could certainly say it was a thought in the back of my head. Like, look at Carl. He's very successful, runs his own club, and he didn't have to go D1 to do that. And it, that's the simple truth. And, like, one thing that it boiled down to me with coming to Grandview is just going somewhere where you're going to get the respect and love that you deserve. And, it, you know, certain wrestlers need different amounts of that. But Mitchell and Reedy, both from the beginning, even after we went to South Dakota State, they always just seemed like they cared. And, it, you know, at this point, I've been at Grandview for like four and a half years. And I've had lots of ups and lots of downs. And my coaches have been instrumental in helping me get through a lot of the off the mat stuff. And the simple truth is it's hard to be successful in wrestling if you don't have other aspects of your life in control. And it, uh, yeah, so like bottom line, it's just, I, I, I wish people would stop looking at divisions and just uh, going somewhere where you know you're gonna be treated the way that you deserve. And I definitely get that at Grandview. I feel like Josh gets that at Kearney. And deep down, that's one of the big reasons that, you know, regardless of how this season ends, I'll be able to look back and say that I, I've really enjoyed my wrestling career and I certainly made the right choice and I don't regret a thing. And look at the level of competition because, uh, you know, you're going from Division One to Division Two and the NAI. There's a lot of people that don't follow these divisions just assume these good teams are full of ringers. They're full of guys that, that oh, yeah, you're hiding out. In, 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 a, in a lower division, and lower only in number, uh, not necessarily in talent. Neither of you guys have gone undefeated throughout the course of a season. You, you've, you've made the national finals. You haven't, uh, you've lost to the national finals in those situations. And the toughness of these levels, I guess, kind of explain it for people that may look at it going, well, it's, it's not as good as D1. I mean, there, there's, there's, there's the depth issues, but uh, Josh, from, from right there in Division Two, you probably see more D1s uh, on the regular with the Opens and such, obviously. Um, of course, just, I mean, actually, that's probably not even a fair statement. You both probably see plenty of D1s at open tournaments and such. But again, that level of competition, um, opening the eye opening experience for you, Josh, uh, Josh, what was that like when you first, you know, stepped in the mat for Carney? Uh, yeah, well, you know, real quick, I learned when I stepped on the mat in college, even when I was at South Dakota State, because a lot of the opens you enter as a red shirt, they have a lot of non division one guys. I learned really quick that if you wrestle in college, you're a very good wrestler. Like, and it didn't didn't matter the division. Like, if you spent time in a college room for any time, doesn't matter NAI, JUCO, whatever, you're gonna be legit. Like, it's it's gonna be a battle to win. And all all of the good college wrestlers would tell you the same thing. Let alone people who haven't had as much success in college, but. The fact of the matter is, like, everybody's good in each division. Like, yes, there is a level up when you get to D1. Like, obviously, like, like the top 20 there are, are, are phenomenal. But um, I was just thinking about it for my weight in D2 the other day. And, like, I think the eight All-Americans that were in my bracket were from eight different states. And they were all, like, three-timers or, or multiple-time state champs from their state. So, like... You'd get the best guy from Indiana. There's the best guy from West Virginia. There's a g great guy from Ohio. Like there's somebody good from every state, and like, yeah, you're you're still gonna get good competition no matter which division you go. And it especially seems the case lately. A lot of people have been choosing to go non D one, and people are starting to open up to that a lot more. And that's just making non D one a lot tougher. So it's going to continue to get exponentially tougher, I think, each year. And I don't think it's going to be as crazy that people are going uh, non-D1 in the first place. Because I know when I was in high school, uh, a lot of people did make it seem like D1 was the only way to go. And if you, don't, if you don't go D1, you're not as good, yada, yada. And I think people are realizing that's kind of just, at the end of the day, it's an extrinsic goal. Like, you can still be happy and chase your dreams and win big 
91 as well. So that's kind of my little take on it. Josh, I'm going to point to your athletic director, Mark Bauer, the former coach there, and he basically, his recruiting pitch back in the day, and of course there's a guy that came through Nebraska, Carney, that did pretty well on the international level, ended up getting an Olympic medal, placed a couple times world championships, Travel Delagnev, and Mark once told me, he goes, the only thing I can't give you as a coach and an experience is a Division One national championship. That's the only thing, because, you know, because Travell won the Midlands. Uh, Justin, you know that Nick has sent Grandview guys to the Midlands in the past, and, you know, Eric Thompson had... Uh, successful time, you know, you know, Dylan Long, of course, when he was coming back through, he won the Midlands for for Grandview. So the opportunities to to hit these big guns. I mean, there's been a Hodge winner from the NAIA. So uh, the opportunities to compete against the big dogs still exist. They begin to 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 the former coach Bowers' point. It's the only thing he can't give you at this level. So, um, but it's also when I look at it to pitch the kids at the NAI and Division Two, II, Division Three, the non D one levels, be like it's about fit. And you guys both talked about you weren't a fit at South Dakota State. You're a fit where you're at now. Now let's talk about you two fitting this match. Let's bring it back to the match and fitting it into your schedule, fitting it to be the last match of the duel, and then sitting there fitting in a score to go into overtime. Okay, was was this plan, guys? Come on. It's, it's just almost too perfect. 10-10? Did you guys picture this in your mind going into overtime? I guess go with you, Justin. I honestly did not think that it was going into <laughs> overtime. You know, you I, know I had to ask it, right? Because it's like, ah, come on, really? Yeah, <laughs> there's been people saying that, but... What a lot of people don't understand is it's a whole different ball game when I walk out there wearing a GV singlet, mm-hmm. and I'm sure that Josh feels the same way. Uh, I'm really proud to represent my coaches in my school, and I don't want to lose to anyone wearing that singlet ever. I don't care if it's just a slightly uglier version of me. But uh, <laughs> oh, what the heck? I think we're clipping that one for the Instagram right there. Yeah. Fair enough. But, uh, yeah, like uh, my plan was to come in, hand fight them just as hard as I like to hand fight everyone and go take them down. And uh, right from the beginning, he kind of threw a wrench into my plan. He shot before I even had the chance to. And uh, it's just, I think that that's the way that both of us like to wrestle most of the time. I think sometimes in other matches, either the other guy is stalling a lot or sometimes it's our nerves that get to us. But I like to have shootouts. I mean, Obviously, I'd like to pin and tech fall the dude, you know, like I want to dominate, but I love walking off the match after a good like 13 to 12 match or something, for example. Um, But yeah, like I honestly felt like I was in the driver's seat of that match late, but like I almost had that cradle and then he got an escape and then he took me down, which with his signature fireman's too, like you think I'd know to stop that. But uh, and then it went into overtime, and I was not really surprised there was an overtime. But I remember we were hand fighting, and I was like, I got to end this now. Like, I just got to take the first shot. Little do I know, my twin is having the exact same thoughts. And uh, I don't know how close you were watching the match, but we shot at the exact same time. And it's like, there's no way that you can plan that. Like, for one, it's way too obvious to plan. But two, like, it's just, like, what are the odds that he shot? Just Well, he shot, like, a fraction of a second before me. And I've actually watched the film a lot, and it, it kind of bothers me. Like, that's kind of a lesson <laughs> I can take from that match. Like, doesn't matter who it is. I'm, I'm going to watch the match footage, and I'm going to learn something from it. And from there, it's like, you know, I've been watching Cobra Kai, too. And, like, that's a, it's a spinoff of The Karate Kid. And one of their main phrases is uh, – strike first, strike fast, no mercy. So I've been kind of trying to have more of a mantra of striking first and taking that first attack. And uh, my darn brother beat me to the punch, and that was the difference maker. That's badass. Uh, yeah, I'm a big Cobra Kai fan. Haven't started the the, the most recent season, but uh, considering I grew up in the era when the Karate Kid was coming out, so um, All right. got a little, little couple years on you, a couple yeah. hundred years on you. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big yeah. Cobra Kai fan because uh, – Man, I watched, okay, real side note, when that series came out, I think it was YouTube Red was the first time. I watched the entire first season in one sitting overnight. So, yeah, that's 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 how I'm binging stuff like that. So I need, yeah. to, need to get, I need to find a trip and watch uh, season four. But anyway, back to not Cobra Kai stuff. Uh, Josh, this match, this thing was crazy. I mean, they're, like, like, you know, Justin pointed out, we've got near, we got potential crazy situations with cradles. We've got 
almost turns that just go out of bounds. I mean, I'm sitting there going, these guys clearly have hit these moves on one another before because, I mean, it's obviously it's feel, but, you know, Justin saying you both shoot at the same time. I mean, how much was this like a real scrap with an opponent that, you've you've met before or haven't met before or or how much is it like this is like we're wrestling in our living room and throwing everything we've got at each other how what was the 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 compare contrast to that yeah i would say i i didn't approach it like a living room match at all like yes we've wrestled then but i think we can both agree that we took it just like we would any other match and like uh, i told him like after the duel i'm like once it got to like 174 184 when the duel was still neck and neck, I, I just had a thought to myself, like, it's really going to come down to our match. Like, this is going to be serious. Like, I've got to get in the zone. And, like, that's when I started, like, for sure, like, that's when it started hitting me. And I actually started, like, this is serious. Like, let's go. Like, it's, it's time to get this. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we went out there and, and we just let it fly. And... I said beforehand, I was going to use this match because I know that he likes to let it fly as well. I was going to use it as a match that I could really try my offense out as well. Um, Whereas against other guys, you know, I might be a little bit more uh, conserved and whatnot. But uh, me and him, we both just, we attacked often. And the attacks that we got are attacks that we've hit on other people before as well. So it's not like... They were just like random crazy attacks or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was just a a real, a real scrap. And yeah, it's just, you can kind of tell, I think we both kind of catch our breath after the the end of the third Mm -hmm. when it's still tied. And I I feel like we both were just thinking like, of course, like, here we go. Owned overtime, of course. Then, I'm doing my best Rock yeah. Harris impression. I'm sitting right here. I'm like going, no, I'm like yelling to myself, like yeah. no freaking way this is happening. Yeah. I, mean, it well, was... I had to write him out. <laughs> if I would have wrote him out. I would have won by one point and he got out with like five seconds left or something like that. And then I was like, of course. It's like free. Then, right? I mean, cause I'm tweeting it's se- you know, I'm screenshotting it's seven, seven. Are you kidding me? And then it's like 10, 10 and people are like, who won, who won? And everybody's like Portillo won. Uh, so, you yeah. know, there's always that stuff. But, uh, when we're looking at the dual meet now, of course, again, I'm, I'm statistically oriented and tracking this going, Oh wow. It's going to, he's going to have to major, <laughs> major him to tie tech or pin to win. I don't think we're going to see a tech. No, you know, no offense to either one of you. I was like, I just don't think that they're going to tech each other. Now, you can always pin somebody. We get that. But, yeah. uh, Justin, how much of the dual meet now was sitting on you and in the pressure of that streak going, ah, oh, crap, if I get caught here, we lo- I lose to my brother and we lose the streak? Yeah, I didn't think I'd get pinned. I, I don't get pinned very often. Like, even if I get put on my back, I'm usually pretty good at fighting off. But, yeah, before the match, Mitchell even told me, like, hey, don't get pinned. <laughs> like, um, yeah, so uh, I, I knew he wouldn't major me. So, like, that did play a small part for sure. Like, don't do anything stupid to get pinned. Like, I don't know what's going on in this guy's head. Like, I'm sure he would have tried to pin me if he could. Like, like I said, if the duel is coming down to the line, like, neither of us want our teams to lose. So I kept that in mind. And, you know, even before the match, like, scouting wise it's it was pretty interesting like like you said like we kind of know a lot of what the other person's going to go through but it was interesting uh coach Mitchell was able to pick up on a couple of things that I didn't even really know and you know I've been watching this dude my entire life and Mitchell caught up on a couple of his tendencies and I was able to negate some of his stuff like rolling around on bottom I was able to stop a few of his things but um but that was another thing I didn't necessarily want to roll around too much with him on top and bottom because that's where the crazy stuff happens. So uh, I think he ended up reversing me once or twice, but you know, match management, just like any match, sometimes you got to know when to give up the reversal and not go on your back. But um, I felt pretty confident going into that match that I would have it in the bag for my team. Yeah. Now with your team, okay, what's you know you're at 125. You guys both know at, in duels like this, of course, having gone through the pressure cooker that is the national duels. Rarely does the duel come down to you, and rarely does, an, almost never, probably. I'm just gonna say never has the duel come down to a set of twin brothers uh, to decide a, a, a duel meet uh, in in such uh, in such order. Now, 
I'm looking at how the duel is unfolding. Okay, Brongart gets down big, and then he comes back. Kratos gets the and like in this big swing of momentum at 97. I mean, so so Justin, what's going through your mind as you see this match unfold? Your guy get down, then come back and just crank up and get a fall. Well, yeah, like before that match even happened, I I try not to do this, but I was kind of like calculating like what I think the duel score would be, and you know, Prince was getting that lead on Brongar and I was, you know, my, my heart was racing a little bit, but, um, Owen's my roommate, actually. He's one of my roommates. So, uh, I don't know, maybe he was just, he really wanted us to win for me, but, um, that (laughs) cradle was insane, especially just Owen's really interesting because he knows how to turn on and off his like, animalistic instinct almost like he can usually be pretty like stoic and relaxed but when it's time to scrap he just like turns into a different person and yeah i I don't know what it is that like clicked in his head necessarily but he reversed the dude and it almost looked like he was just drilling like he just smacked on that cradle pinned him and yeah our whole bench went nuts the gym silent our bench really loud and in my head i thought I, I thought that that would actually clinch the duel for us. And then heavyweight came and heavyweight was a result that, I mean, nobody on Grandview really expected, but I'm sure all of the Carney guys expected it. But um, that was another huge momentum swing. And, you know, I can talk about every match of the duel. Like I'm super proud of Carson Taylor starting the duel off the way that he did. You want to talk about momentum swings. He was this close to being pinned in the first period in a cradle like if you ask the right person they'll probably tell you he was pinned but instead he just slowly he sets the example he, he starts chipping away even still after the second period it was still like six to one not looking really good and uh carson just stuck at it and uh that's the stuff that a lot of our team prides ourselves on like we i think it's a big part of the reason that we beat life university um it's just you know the whole concept of fighting at the last whistle, fighting harder than everyone else. And I think a good amount of our team went out there and did that. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the whole duel was just really crazy leading yeah, up was, to our it was, match. It was bananas. Yeah. Now, Josh too, you know, Justin kind of stole my next question here. It's like after, now he said, then you go to heavyweight where again, you've got an all American D2 Lee Harrington, got a good Greco pedigree there. And then this monster, from Dowling Catholic named Greg Hagan. This guy is just gigantic. And then to see that turn out the way it did, what's that do for the team's morale and momentum on the Carney side after coming off such a you know a deflating loss? Then all of a sudden you're heavyweight and you figure heavyweight's gonna be three two or you know, this could go to the tiebreakers because you know good heavyweights typically don't end up in situations like that on both sides of the thing. So what's 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 the 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 Josh Portillo mindset, the Carney mindset? after uh after coming off that fall and then that big win at heavyweight yeah you know after big lee harrington did what he did it's kind of just like we're still in this like we've got this we're alive we have a chance to win this duel still when a lot of us probably thought when we got pinned at 97 that was a really big blow considering greg hagan is the number one ranked nai heavyweight and i know greg pretty well uh, we've did some, we've done some camps together in, in the summer and whatnot. And Big Lee's one of my best friends, and I knew it would be a, a a decent match. And Lee just really put it in his hands, and he 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 changed the momentum and made it great for me. Like the crowd was loving it, the crowd ate it up, and you know I wish I could have watched that match even a little bit more, but I was kind of trying to focus on my match. But uh, yeah, Lee doing what he did, he put us in the in the duel. And he gave us a chance. And to be honest, you could argue that I almost did get the pin against <laughs> There's two different moments that I had him on his on his back for like one second. But still, like I had a cradle locked, my first takedown on him actually. And it was like, you know, if I get the right lock on that, who knows? I could have got back points, maybe a pin there. Um, it could lead to a major. And then at the end in overtime, I pancaked him straight to his back, and that could have very well been been back <laughs> in the bar as well. But yeah, well, yeah, like, would have been in overtime. That was a position where like 
honestly, I might have tried to scramble in a in a lot of situations and do something crazy, but yeah, like I felt like I was beat, and I was just like belly out, belly out, belly out. <laughs> like, do not get pinned. Like that would have been absolutely bonkers, pinning me in overtime. Yeah, to to end the streak in the yeah that would be now now I'm gonna tell you a slight story a brief offshoot story so there was a dual meet uh, I think it was it was Wyoming and uh, Iowa State the other night and Buchanan and Bastida went into overtime and Bastida went right to his back and like in overtime and the referee just started swipes and I was like they could he, he could have been decked there and that it was a national duels years ago between uh, Oklahoma and Ohio State. And Tommy Rollins, I believe, double-legged Leon's crump to his back in overtime. And the match was like, okay, it's overtime. Oklahoma's up. Um, you know, it was. I think they were up by four. Or four or five. Okay, you know, they're not going to win. Well, crump just like, I think he just laid back after he got taken down in overtime. And the refs slapped the mat as Rollins pounced. And Ohio State won the dual meet. Um, these just kind of gave up. So that's one thing uh, you'll always remember in those situations. Like, yeah, always, always, always. Yeah. Belly down. Good, good, good call. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, let's see P if my <laughs> good call, Mr. Uh, P one. Yeah, there we go. I'm still, I'm never, it's like the Paulsons. I'm TP one, TP two. I'm never going to get this right now. Moving forward, as far as individual goals, because uh, it, it was so much fun to see the buildup for this, the graphic, the fact that the teams bought in, Dalton Jensen bought in, Nick Mitchell bought in, D2 and NAI. I mean, you had two whole divisions really on center stage and what was a really good weekend for, for college wrestling. Uh, I took time away from watching the Virginia duels. I was supposed to go, but uh, somebody tested positive for that 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 thing that's going around. So I had to stay home, but it was good for me. I got to watch your, your match and the whole duel in the uh, the sanctity of my speakeasy here, but individually, uh, Justin, you've gone three, five, two, four, and you've made the finals. You've been upset. You've been cheered against mightily because when Grandview loses in the finals, everybody goes nuts. It's like you know the evil empire. We got to the point where we're even playing the Imperial Death March when you guys walk out at times and accept the trophy and such. And then, uh, Josh, you've also made the finals. You went five, two. Then your season was was wiped out. Uh, with COVID as a first team All American, uh, the the seasons are different. So Justin, you actually got to wrestle before the cancellation of before. of that 2020 season, and then Josh last year, just in the season that it was, you didn't place. So we'll start with you. How much of these? I mean, not just the finals loss, but how much of last year's disappointments really driving you to come back for this extra year? How much was that a factor? Yeah, I would say each year has ended kind of. Uh, I would say on a on a bad note for me, because my freshman year when I lost when when I got fifth, uh, I kind of got upset in the semis. I beat the returning national champ in the quarters, and it's not that I overlooked the guy in the semis, but it was just a really crushing loss. And then I lost to another national champ on the backside, but then uh, the next year I lost in the finals, which was th- that was probably one of the worst defeats ever for me, just mentally because it sucks making it so so close like and and then losing it like a lot of people can attest that losing in the national finals sucks like the most or the state finals or something like that um then my third year uh like you said it was canceled by covid uh the week before they had my brother's nationals and it was like nothing was crazy nothing was going on and then i was the two seed for my nationals and i was actually the one seed's only loss and i beat him by six points I just had a lot of high hopes that season. It got canceled, so that kind of stunk, of course. And then last year, I didn't place. So they all ended in kind of motivating ways for me. And I'm just blessed that I actually get a fifth year. You know, not a lot of people get as much time as I do in college to chase my dreams. And this is just one extra chance, one final shot. And uh I'll be darned if I'm not going to give it my all and do everything I can to try to reach my goal this year. And, you know, if I fall short, I fall short, but I'm at least going to be able to say that I gave it my all. So, yeah. Justin, I'm going to give you a little different dynamic of kind of the same question, obviously having been there and, and, and fallen just short. Uh, you've got an opportunity to become like a rare five-time place winner, not a five-time All-American because we, we know that the All-American – uh, honors that are bestowed by the NWCA are all American honors. You're not taking those away. You can be a five time place winner. And the dynamic is is different in the NAI because you get the opportunity to have a teammate 
potentially at the Nationals with you. Obviously, Esco Walker uh, transferred in. He was a returning All-American at a higher weight. As a matter of fact, you guys bumped uh, around for, for the duel against life, and now you've got a chance to look to win your first title, but you probably haven't, you, you potentially have to go through a teammate to do it. So how much does that fifth year <laughs> falling short drive you? And then how much do you've got a teammate in the room pushing you for that title? Well, the whole teammate pushing me thing is nothing new. Uh, my freshman year, when I transferred in, they had Matt win at the weight. He was a returning all American and that guy, Matt, uh, he almost tech balled me at conference that year. And then uh, at nationals, I ended up pinning him. Following year, we had Trevor Morano, who was an All-American at 133. He apparently had a dream one night that he won a national title at 125. So he cut down to 125 my sophomore year. So both of those years, I, I've had to battle guys in my room. And that year, actually, ironically, I beat him at conference, but he beat me at nationals. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we take two at 125. <laughs> um, even beyond me and Esco, uh, there, there's a lot of talent in that room that, that goes really deep. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm i almost just expecting them to take another 125. But I like that. I like having someone on my tail in the own room pushing me. It, it keeps me hungry. You know, there's I, I like the idea of, uh, like, not being the best person in the room. You know, if you're the best person in the room, probably not in a good room to grow. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And, uh yeah, like me and my brother both, uh, we faced last year pretty tough because not only did we fall short of our goals, but like for me in the semis, I was winning pretty control. I, I was in control of the match, I would say. And I think what went wrong for me is I was just worried too much about winning. That was my big lesson that I took away from that. It's way too worried about winning the match, not thinking about having fun, not thinking about scoring points. All that. So I ended up losing in overtime. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. Both me and my brother's teams took second at Nationals last year, and both team races came down to heavyweight. And uh, that's just crazy. Like, that's just totally like another twin thing. Like, both of our teams just barely missing out. And it's like, you know, if any one of us would have just won one extra match or even just gotten like one or two extra bonus points, that could have been the difference maker. So um, for me, I think I've I've tried to look back on it with a lot of gratitude and I'm super thankful for this extra year. It was never really a question if I was going to take it or not, because I've got a little bit of extra school anyways. And uh, honestly, just I've rested my entire life. Like, this is what I do. So if you're going to give me an extra year, of course, I'm going to take it. But I've, I've really had a different philosophy this year and I've just... I've tried to keep the pressure off of me and really enjoy what I'm doing and we're going to keep that rolling. And it's about that time of year. we got a few duels left, conference, nationals, and that'll be it for me. So I'm trying my best to stay healthy and stay hungry and see where we go these next few months. You brought up an interesting point about both your teams finishing second. So we'll, we'll close with the team goals this year. We've, we've talked about the individual goals, the the uniqueness of y'all's battle, of course, the, the win streak at Grandview, uh, the culture at Kearney and such. But uh, Josh, what was the team? What was Coach Jensen's message to you guys last year after falling just short? And how has that kind of uh, prevailed into maybe a team mantra this year to try to win a title? Because Central Oklahoma is having a really good season. Of course, you know St. Cloud State's going to become going to come to the tournament prepared. There's a lot of lot of landmines in Division Two. So, uh, what's that team mindset coming in, and how much is that is is driven off of last year's runner-up finish? Yeah, you know, after how Nationals ended last year, which was a heartbreaker, uh, we had the lead going into heavyweight, the, the National Finals at the very last weight, and it was just snatched up right before our eyes, and that, that just stinks being that close. And, and like my brother said, one win at any one of our 10 weights, one more win would have guaranteed us the victory. We would have had the title. And it just stinks to be that close. And I remember we met the day after when we got back because it was that serious and we wanted to talk about how we felt as a team. And it, it, we just, we remember how crushing of a defeat it was and we want to make sure that doesn't happen again. We pretty much could could taste the, the team title and it just barely got away from us. And, you know, 
we we want that we want that title and we're going to do everything we can to get it this year we have a a team of of superstars and in, in my opinion that they're all a, a lot of us are seniors too we've had crazy journeys and and just crazy stories in college so far and our our coach Jensen's kind of said he wishes that the we could have just capped the book off last year and, and won the national title on and and put an end to the whole COVID book and whatnot. But that book's still going on and it's just not finished yet. And and we've just got to make sure that last chapter ends good and that it has a good ending, you know. And yeah, and in the end, we're, we're going to walk away champions and I'm excited for it. Justin, in your case, uh, you've been on a team that's walked away champions. But one thing that I will always remember that is, you know, burned into my memory is, uh, you know, most people know I announced the NAI championships is when I'm calling Life University up to the podium to accept their trophy. There is Grandview off to the back. Nick Mitchell, arms crossed, like 10,000 yard stare, like just the whole team just staring at Life University getting this trophy what was said, if anything was, and how much of that moment has been driving you guys this season? Drives the heck out of us. Uh, so, yeah, um, and apparently Coach Mitchell, all the way back, way, way, way back when we uh, – so, like, I think our first title was in – it was either 2012 or 2013. But the last year that we didn't win it, he did the same thing. And uh, basically what it was is uh, – I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. For one, it's kind of like, that's our trophy, you know, like, that's ours, and, and someone else is picking it up. They earned it, of course, but um, watching them drives us. And it's also kind of like, that's, in a way, it's, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but I'll tell you, you could probably take it for granted. Like, every year that I've been at Grandview, we've walked up, held the banner, and like even the year before i walked up there and i still almost like had tears in my eyes because i lost in the finals in 2020 and i was still super bummed about losing in the finals our team still won it but um yeah we uh a lot of our guys actually have uh the picture of us standing watching them get their trophy up in our locker room and we look at that a lot and you know there's a lot of different reasons that you could say we didn't win a title that year but bottom line is a picture speaks a thousand words and all of us like that picture will forever capture the brokenness of our hearts in that moment and stuff like that drives us a lot and uh, you know the goal is to have a different type of picture taken this year up on that mat championship banner well it'll be in Wichita I know uh, off top of my head Josh where's D2's this year I can't remember off the top of my head St. Louis again, St. Uh, Louis. Okay. Back in St. Louis, okay. So uh, good. I'm pretty sure the venue there is pretty good. Again, because of the overlap in D3 and D2, I haven't been to Division Two since they were in Birmingham uh, at a festival multiple years ago. Maybe they can they can split them back up and I can hit all these tournaments every single year. But uh, sadly, D2, uh, I, I have to miss. Fortunately, I've seen uh, Justin wrestle at the NIAs the last several years. So uh, to you guys, again, I want to say from a wrestling perspective, thank you for putting on a show. Uh, with that dual meet, and and thank Dalton Jensen, thank Nick Mitchell for giving the wrestling junkies out there an amazing duel to watch, not just an amazing 125-pound match to watch. So uh, I'm a big proponent of that interdivisional matchups. I know some schools like it, some schools don't like it, but I thought it was great for the sport of wrestling. I think the win streak and being able to to have people take shots at it is a good thing for the sport of wrestling because you need somebody to chase, especially in the NAIA. Grandview hasn't lost since 2011. In a dual meet. I mean, it's been it's been a decade since they've lost to an NAIA team. So, but again, thank you guys both for for spending the time talking about your background today and what the match was like. And uh, best of luck through the rest of the season. I know I'll at least see one of you at least one more time this year. So, uh, so I'll give you the last word, Josh. Last word for you. Yeah, I mean, hey, it was our pleasure. Uh, I kind of talked to you after St. Cloud meet, and I I just appreciate what you're doing. And yeah, thanks for having us on. Justin, last word. Since uh, you you went first, now you get to go last. Yeah, um, basically the same stuff as he said. Took the words out of my mouth, but uh, yeah, Imagine I'm really that. happy that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm really happy we were able to make that duel happen. Uh, it was a lot. In a way, it was lower stress for me because 
you know, the ego is not necessarily there. Like, obviously, I want to beat my brother, but I'm not going to beat myself up about it. But it was a good little short term goal to have. And uh, it was a lot of fun. But like I said, now it's time to get even more serious, train a little bit harder and buckle down. So, but yeah, thanks for having us on the show. And I, I really appreciate what you do for, for all of wrestling, but especially for them smaller divisions. Don't get a lot of love, but yeah, thank you. Well, my pleasure. And on behalf of those watching, EJ Newton in the chat and Gardner Wheeler, and of course, Billy Wood, one of our patrons, thank you for watching the uh, the post recap of P1 versus P2, Carney and Grandview. This has been the Short Time Wrestling Podcast.